is something we know. News from our nerve endings. Listen, we can hear houses breathe. Sometimes in the depth of the night we hear them groan. It's as if they're having bad dreams. cradles and comforts. The bad one fills us with instinctive unease. Bad houses hate our warmth, our humanness. That blind hate of our humanity is what we mean when we use the word haunted. Steve? Are you alright? Yeah. It stopped. I heard it too. But it stopped. What? What did you hear? Well, there, there were words. It wasn't clear. Did any of you... I might have heard something. Or it might have just been my imagination. So. Steve, what was it? How would I know? I don't have a psychic bone in my body, as you well know. You tested me yourself, so there's no real... What? What are you looking at? Um, nothing. Can you come here? Uh. Oh, we might as well get started. Will you, uh... All right. Emma's old boy, why don't you come and give us a hand? It seems to be the butler's day off. Don't call me that. Come on. For $5,000, you can at least carry a couple of boxes, can't you? I'm not being paid for my services as a porter. Sir, you were expected. This way. 
coming, sir. You were expected. This way. How old were you when you got lost in there? Eight? Nine? What are you talking about? The room with colored light. The smell of sawdust. What happened? What did you see? What? What frightened you? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, don't you? But you're not saying. Just cold metal, that's all. Well, but, but you spoke. There was something there, but it's gone. <sighs> I didn't like the way it felt. Caretaker must have left it there after he let in the guys who brought the equipment. You'll miss Thank it. You. Not after the summer. Come September, there won't be a gate to open. There's a flashlight for each of you. I suggest you keep it on or near you at all times. Yeah, the power's fine most of the time. And if it goes out, I don't suppose looking for the fuse box does much good? Nope. Neither does calling Puget Sound Energy. What about your equipment? Well, if the power goes, everything in mine switches over to batteries. I think we better get started. Where's Annie? afternoon, 3.17 p.m. We've just experienced our first paranormal phenomenon, a phantom draft. Ah! 
The only thing I insist on is that you don't go off exploring on your own. The geography of Rose Red can seem unstable. Well, maybe we should double up on sleeping arrangements. I don't mind sharing with Kathy, or, or the three of us could go in together like summer camp. I'll sleep with Emery, and after midnight, we'll raid the fridge, won't we, Em? No, the bedrooms are perfectly safe. The important thing is not to go off wandering. I think you'll find this interesting. Wow. We could make Thanksgiving dinner for a hundred people in here. Maybe after the place was fumigated. You're such a charmer. Was I talking to you? Ellen Rimbauer called this the health room. We call it a solarium. A railroad executive named George Meter, friend and drinking buddy of John Rimbauer, died in here just after the end of the First World War. According to a doctor, he was stung by a bee, died of an extreme allergic reaction. As I told you, in Rose Red's heyday, men didn't fare well here. That's not very reassuring, Joyce. I'm sure you have nothing to worry about. Just remember to use the buddy system when you're moving through the house. Now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? What's this? Did the caretaker leave that too? I doubt it. Well, then who? We'll press read island, see who answers. Professor Carl Miller of the psychology department. I'm not able to answer the phone at the present time. Leave a message at the beep if you like, but remember your Shakespeare. Who is it? Brevity is the soul of wit. Hello, Professor Miller. This is Joyce Reardon's friend, Stephen Rimbauer. We seem to have found a piece of your property here in Rose Red. I'm fairly sure you didn't drop it yourself since we saw you only an hour ago, but I've got a good idea who did. The guy who wrote the newspaper story, am I right? Now, trespassing isn't a very serious crime, and abetting a trespasser is probably even less serious, but I think your dignity is going to take a hit at the very least. Guess who's going to be the cover boy on next week's newspaper? You have a nice day. Bravo, Steve. Bravo. You can't be certain that that is Professor Miller's cell phone. Oh, of course it is. If you want proof, dial some of the numbers in memory. I bet one of them is that son of a bitch Bollinger. If the reporter had the phone, Where's the reporter? Maybe the house ate him. Isn't that what it's supposed to do? Eat people? No, probably something frightened him, the sort of thing neither he nor Professor Miller believes in, and he just ran off. Perhaps he's still in the house. Well, if he is, then we'll find him. I mean, come on, folks, let's... Uh... Joyce, are you, you sure we shouldn't, you know, notify somebody? Why should we? If Bollinger's here, he's trespassing, just like Steve said. And if we call the cops, then we're apt to find ourselves with half a dozen police tromping through the house and roiling up the atmosphere, and then he'll win. That pig Miller will win in spite of everything, and I can't have it, okay? I just won't. I, I, I can't. I won't. It's okay. He doesn't get to win. And if we find Bollinger, we can give him a cup of tea and a good spanking and send him on his way. Sounds good to me. Yeah, me too. On with the show? Mm. On with the show. It's a pity no one kept up those vines. Yeah, well, there hasn't been a full-time groundskeeper at Rose Red since Omicron oil fell off the big board a quarter century ago. I, uh, I believe we're lingering in the kitchen because Joyce wants to tell you about my great aunt April. Well, go on, Joyce. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I mean, that's what we're here for, right? Besides, it was all before my time. Go on. Well, April was six years old when she disappeared. Her brother Adam was away at boarding school. Boarding school at eight? Ah, it was Rimbauer's idea. Oh, Ellen ranted and raved. But John, at least this time, put his foot down and kept it down. He didn't trust Rose Red even then. This was the last place April was ever seen. Sukina stepped into the pantry over there for what she swore was for no more than 30 seconds. When she came out... April? April, honey, where are you? April?
searched the house and grounds. They found nothing. Not so much as a lock of hair or a thread from her dress. Great-grandfather was convinced Tsukina had something to do with it, so he had her taken downtown. Ellen objected in the strongest possible terms, but John respectfully declined to listen. Ellen, Ellen, stop it! <laughs> Please, John! Tsukina! Tsukina was taken to the sort of small basement room you can probably imagine in question for 50 hours. No sleep, no food, no bathroom breaks, no mercy. I don't know. She was gone. I don't know. In the end, she convinced them that she didn't know anything about April's disappearance, but it cost her, I mean, it cost her three teeth, a broken nose, and a broken wrist. Eventually, Ellen's maid was allowed to return home again. I mean, the only home she had left, anyway. So when do we get to go upstairs? I heard that's where the really weird stuff is. Mm -hmm. No time like the present. <clears throat> Come on, everybody. that one before. Neither did I. For the rest of the weekend, could you please try to remember who's running this expedition? Sure. Nick, could you come here, please? If you could tie the end of your rope to that pole there, it'll help us find our way back. Well, uh, couldn't we just go back and get the plans? In this house, the plans don't always mean a lot. It's only a safety measure, honestly. So follow me and prepare to be amazed. this the perspective hallway. It was her first major addition, and no architect designed it either. She made it up herself? <laughs> Way to go, Ellen. But she didn't. Then who? Sukina. Her maid? Her companion. It's so wild, like something in a funhouse. Oh, it's making my stomach turn. I guess, I guess they're pieces built in perspective. Camouflaging the real doors was Great Graham's idea. She didn't want them to spoil the illusion. Bollinger! Hey, Bollinger, are you in there? to this place to wake up. I'd say you've been successful in that what regard. Was that? Who screamed? 
I know does she ever get assertive, no or does she always waffle is. like that? It was the house. She doesn't talk much, but Sukina was the first she says she means. Rose red scream shortly after April disappeared. Yeah, I'll In say. the mid '60s, a team of scientists, one of them a geologist, spent some time investigating Rose Red, and heard the house scream several times. They recorded a couple of them, uh, actually, although on tape they don't sound very impressive. What did they conclude? That they were hearing the sound of underground water. Huh. Mm, perhaps amplified by the old water drainage pipes that run under this part of Seattle. Underground water. People faced with these sort of phenomena tend to protect their belief systems ferociously. This hallway was the last place Ellen Rimbaugh was ever seen, you know. They moved in on January 15th, 1909. Ellen marked the occasion each January 15th by wearing the same white dress she wore on the day they arrived. For many of those years, Ellen threw a party on January 15th, and everybody who was anybody showed up. Politicians, hoodlums, sports players, stars. And when the actress disappeared, the, uh, the party stopped. Well, finish telling us about old Mrs. Rimbauer. She disappeared on January 15th, 1950. She was 70. A maid saw her and wished her good evening, and she swept by as if she didn't even hear her. And that was the last anyone ever saw of her. Come on, lots more to see. This is the gymnasium. You'll notice that although the exercise equipment is out of date, This room demands a particular form of exercise. Uh, what? How? What? Uh... It's the mirror library. It's not in the plans, but I remember seeing it as a little boy. I was afraid to go in because I thought I'd fall. They're not in the plans? How can they not be in the plans? There's a camera. <gasps> not good. Not good at all. The property of Kevin Bollinger. Oh God. Mr. Bollinger, Mr. Bollinger, are you here? What's wrong? I told you this might happen. The lights will come back on. In the meantime, use your flashlights. I, th I think we should go back downstairs. Shh, nonsense. Oh my, look. Somebody talking to Bollinger. Yeah, I bet I know who. Is Bollinger alive? Can you tell? He was when he dropped this camera. Beyond that, I, I don't know. I, I think we ought to get out of here, Joyce, really. Okay, okay, folks, uh, let's head back downstairs. Break time. Thank God. Wait. 
It's not the same. The hallway. No, 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 nonsense. No, no, he's right. We should be going back the way we came, but we're not. Well, what in heaven's name is that? Steve, what's going on? The building started again. You wanted to wake the place up. Now you got what you wanted. It was whose building and what? I don't know. You're lying. No, I'm not lying. Is it too hard to remember? Or too frightening to remember? It's gone. Stopped. Then I suggest we go downstairs before it starts again. wasn't funny. Okay, uh, I know another way down from here, and there might be something worth seeing along the way. Are you sure you know the way? Yes. <sighs> oh, my God. Oh, my God is right. More camouflage doors, Stevie. Great Gran was never above using a good trick twice. This was her little joke on her husband's business life. Did he get it? I doubt it. I, mean, I don't even really get it. Here's the real door right here. Just, uh, just press right there. This house has everything but Chow. Better, Emery? Well, nothing, I guess. Too much mayo in the crab meat. What do you want, big boy? Bare-breasted nymphs to kneel at your feet and offer you delicacies from silver platters. You stop it right now. Stop harassing me. There's a difference between joking and harassing. Did you never learn that? I learned plenty in high school, believe me, from guys like him and you. Come on, come on, give it a rest. Emery, I may be able to provide you with something you like better in a little while. Tell us about the actress, Joyce. I've always been a sucker for celebrities. Well, that's her. On Ellen's Wall of Fame. Deanna Petrie was a fairly big star <laughs> in the 40s. <laughs> Musical comedies, mostly. She could dance. Sing a little. 
And she was sexy as hell. She was one of Ellen Rimbauer's favorite guests at her January 15th parties. In 1946, she showed up in what Hedda Hopper called the cocktail dress. It was what she was wearing when she disappeared. She spent most of the night here in the billiard room, wowing the guests with her many talents. She left behind a single earring. A maid found it the next day, but there was no longer a girl to go with it. Deanna's disappearance made Rose Red's reputation. And now, Annie, if you've finished eating, I have something to show you. It's nice. You like it. I promise. It's okay. See what you find. It's not dangerous, is it? No, not a bit. Go on, Annie. You okay, son? Yeah. It's really fun. What in the world is it? Whatever it is, she likes it. Revelation 12. No corporal presence in six centuries. No psychic pulse. Emery, are you thinking of dressing for dinner? You tell me. Read my mind. Glenn Miller. That doesn't work. I tried it while I was setting up. Sorry, Annie. Ah! Joyce? Yep, it's all right. Large with two six-pack of soda. Yep, thank you. Yeah, 
told you there might be something you'd like better. Loaded. Excellent. Miss Asbury. May I? Okay. Do this often? Every chance we get. How much? Hey, this is some place, huh? Is it haunted? Yeah. By the ghost of delivery men who asked too many stupid questions and never escaped. Telemetry readout just to count heads. <laughs> Not human ones, certainly. <laughs> um, I'm really worried about Mr. Bollinger. Don't bother. He'll show up eventually. I wish I could be as sure of that as you seem to be. By the way, where's Vic? Right here. Anyone care to dance? Uh, well, not me. I, I'm pooped. Where have you been? I lost my book. Well, it's story time. We've heard the one about the actress. Tell us about Rimbaud's partner, Mr. Posey. Remember that seance I told you about? Starring the famous gypsy psychic, Cora Fry. Hmm, yes. That was 1914, and the war in Europe was heating up the American economy. Omicron oil was in clover, money was rolling in, and John Rimbauer was tired of sharing it. So in October of that same year, he gave Douglas Posey the bum's rush. According to family legend, Uncle Posey had a taste for cowboys. He liked chaps in chaps. Was he into roping or branding? Probably a little bit of both. John Rimbauer bought him out at distress sale prices. He was told never to come back to Rose Red, but he did, once. And that was in 1915. John was in Europe, and Adam and April were at home with their mom. Granddad never forgot Posey tossing him that Tom Mix hat of his. He wanted to keep it, and he threw a tantrum when his mother tried to take it away. And the rose. 
He never forgot April catching the rose. Why did Posey wait a year to do it? And, and why here? Any ideas? If, if you wanted answers, you came to the wrong place. Following the suicide, John and Ellen kept Adam out of Rose Red as much as possible. And as I told you, he was at boarding school when his sister disappeared. He knew damn well that something was very wrong here, even then. The male descendants in the Rimbauer line have mostly stayed clear of the family man, so I, I wasn't here more than half a dozen times as a kid. I got off on my own just once. I was eight. Wait, wait, I thought your father wrote... No, no, my father hated this place. He was afraid of it, but it was my mother who brought me. I forgot until today. Blocked it out, I suppose. Nick reminded me. She... She probably couldn't find a babysitter. What was she looking for? Antiques, loot. I think she was drunk. That's my memory of it, but she so often was in those days. she and dad were broke. After we lost the oil company, it's been a family disease, brokeitis. And while your mother was treasure hunting, you got lost. Yeah, I mean, it was no big deal, but... And uh, you were upstairs before you realized how lost you were. One floor above the mirror library. Or was it three floors, or, or 10? Because when this place gets going, when it feels lively, when it has energy to draw on, Rose Red can make itself as big as it wants, can't it? But finally, you got to the top. And that's where...
advise none of you to go wandering tonight. You'd agree, wouldn't you, Steve? As a matter of fact, I would. Hmm. breathe. Sometimes in the depth of the night, you can hear them groan as if they were having bad dreams. Could I ask you something? Of course, Emery. Would, would you come to bed with me? Look, isn't that your mom? That's not my mother. That, that's just an old... Pam? Pam, what are you doing? Say cheese! Say cheese! I mean... Grand wasn't enough, Ma, not at all. Twenty wouldn't have been enough.
something amazing. It, it explains so much. Explains what? What are you talking about? Turn the record player off, Dad will be pissed. What is it? Did you open that? If you opened it, close it. I can't sleep with the closet door open. I'm afraid of the boogeyman, aren't you? Boogeyman. No boogeyman? Ugh. Ugly lady. Boogie lady.
sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Just pay your bill and kiss my ass. No luck? No, my mother's gonna go crazy. It's not a very long trip for her, even at the best of times. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, well, I'm thinking about getting out of here before she shows up. I get very tired of her, you know, showing up. Also, Rimbauer gets on my nerves. Joyce, too, actually. If you look to your left, you will see the ghosts of April Rimbauer and Douglas Posey. Don't worry, they're perfectly harmless. And you know what? Underneath that phony tour guide shtick, she's as crazy as a Red Queen, off with their heads. And that creepy kid with that creepy doll, she's nuts too. Rimbauer's just smart ass du jour. Well, what's this, your shrink routine? Just get it off your chest. A dead cell. Isn't that what Joyce called it? You want to know about dead? I had a dead movie star in bed with me last night. Diana Petrie? Yeah. It didn't last long, but it was a very physical manifestation. I think I'm getting tired of Rose Red's little tricks. Joyce wants some of her 5,000 back. I'll just see her in court. My mother doesn't hear from me soon. She's really gonna go nuclear. Hang I will try not try my call later. again later. Steve. Uh, good morning. Is it Danny? Danny it is. Would you like some eggs? It would be a pleasure. No, thanks. You seen Joyce? Yes, she is fiddling with her equipment, looking as if she last got a good night's sleep circa 1972. I'd tread carefully if I were you. She's crabby, huh? Very. The video was cloudy, the audio garbled. No recorded telemetry of any use. What's, what's that? Well, that's the wine cellar. Isn't it marvelous? The door was open when I came down this morning. Haven't you seen it before? No. Rose Red hasn't just woken up. It's begun the house and garden version of Frankenstein's monster. That's ridiculous. Is it? Listen. You heard much of that? Well, enough to worry me. And Bollinger's persistent non-appearance worries me, too. I mean, you would think if he was still here, if he was still here and alive, we would have run into him by now, wouldn't you? I don't know. And the longer we go without reporting his disappearance, then the more peculiar our position becomes if he turns up dead or if he doesn't turn up at all. Dom Perignon, 1949. It's a very good year. In my experience, they're all good years. What goes better with scrambled eggs and champagne? Pull the cork, Steve. <clears throat> Will you wet your whistle? It's a little early for me. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. You know, this place is feeding off us. And although I'm sure it finds us all rather tasty, its primary sources of nourishment are little Annie and you. Me? I don't have a telepathic bone in my body. And I don't know what you were before you came here and the house almost ate you alive. But I know now that you're a powerful psychic transmitter operating on Rose Red's wavelength. It almost had you once. It wants you back. It wants Annie, too. 
You're crazy. Crazy? Maybe. But I vouch that Joyce is crazier, and she means to have her proof, even if someone has to die for her to get it. You're wrong. Really? Let's ask Mr. Bollinger if we meet him again. Hmm. What are you doing? I'm trying to make sure Miller actually sent Bollinger here. If he did, I'll call the police and report him missing. Well, Joyce won't like that. According to you, she's not very happy anyway. <laughs> Hey, Professor, what you doing here on the Saturday morning? Minding my business, as I hope you will yours. Oh, who locked this door? I imagine you locked it yourself, Professor. It'd be in your office. Oh, God. You must have the number. It's your cell phone. Will you talk to him if he calls back? I'd be delighted. Thanks. is going to be the cover boy on next week's newspaper. You have a nice day. Damn. Message. Damn Steve you. Steve at 8.42 a.m. This is Stephen Rimbauer again. I need to talk to you about Kevin Bollinger. He slit his wrists and wrote your name on the wall in his own blood before he died. And Joyce suggests you come out here before we call the police. Maybe we can work out a way to minimize the scandal, but it's imperative you come the second you get this message. End of message. You have no more new messages. Have a nice day, Professor. Steve. Good morning, Steve. <laughs> right. yourself out. It's pretty good.
She can also bend spoons, turn on lights, and set off car alarms. Jeez. Huh. I got babies. Yes, yes, very nice babies. I got Adam. I got April. She never talks to strangers. I'm impressed. In fact, I'm stunned. Well, I've never heard Glenn Miller playing out of a flower before. You're, you're Rachel, that, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, most people call me sister, or sissy for short. I think I prefer Rachel. <laughs> so this is a very big deal for Joyce, right? Well, the biggest. Because of all the disappearances, Rose read it as a white whale in the field of psychic research. And now that Miller's gotten her tenure revoked, it's even more important. If Joyce comes back with proof of paranormal activity, she'll be OK. If not, I had no idea things were so dire for her. I, she's paying me a great deal of money, paying Annie, I should say. I wonder if she can afford it. Well, I wonder, too. You really don't know? I mean. Forgive me, but I thought the two of you were closer than that. Oh, in some ways we're close, in other ways we're not even in the same neighborhood. Tell me about her. Oh, she's 15. She's autistic. She loves a summer place. She loves the big bands. She's also telepathic and psychokinetic, which are probably the least important things about her. Can, can I show you something? Sure. Everything was dead at this end of the room yesterday. Well, the house is coming to life. I think we all feel it. Maybe, but the house didn't do this. Annie did. It's the other side of what she is. It's, it's not all frozen pipes and falling stones. When I look at her, I don't see ruin. I see roses. When Annie was five, a dog bit her. Ah, Annie, make him go away. Annie, Annie, make him stop. Oh, Annie, make him go away. Oh, ah. What happened? Oh, my God. Oh, he bit her. Your dog bit my sister. Oh, my God. Buddy, get back in the house. I'm so sorry. He's never done this before. He's never been anyone. I'm so sorry. It'll be all right. You'll see. It'll be just fine. Stones from the sky, and they all just fell on the Stannis' house, nowhere else on the street. I mean, it was the dog that hurt her, and the dog had already been destroyed, but Annie... Annie didn't understand that. Stop it! Answer me! Are you proud of this? Oh, stop it, Daddy! I'm not gonna stop it! Come on, how could you be so stupid? How could you let a reporter get a hold of Annie's drawings? Annie came in while I was arguing with my father, and talk about it. You well, turn around and look at this. I guess you could say she look lodged a protest. telekinetic and that's all Joyce cares about well Joyce is no no I thank you 
I do understand. I mean, I think even Annie understands why we're here in her own way. But for me, the thing that's important about Annie, all that's important about Annie, is that she responds to love with love. There has to be a place for the Annies of the world, doesn't there? I don't know. It'd be nice to think so, but the world isn't always fair. That's all. I know it. drink from the grape and not the grain. Maybe later. Could we... What you thinking? Any idea at all? Not the slightest. If only I'd have known, I would have dressed for the occasion. What's wrong, sweetheart? Miss Asbury? This path is not much farther. Open the road. I might ask you the same thing, madam. Patricia Waterman, Emery's mother? Carl Miller, Professor Miller. Nice to meet you, Professor. Are you going in there? I'm afraid so. Good. I've come to get my boy. Get the gate, would you? <sighs> come on! Put your back into it! Found. Something amazing. It explains so much. Maybe we should tell the others. We will. But I wanted to show you first.
What is wrong with you, woman? Emery! And look what you've done to my car. Emery! Come back! Exchange insurance information. Where are you? What? Woman! Attack. 
Call 911. Not by the hair on my Call chin. Not there, not there, not there, not there, oh not there. Not there. Every, not there. look at me. Please, look at me. For God's sake, open the window. No, no, not there, not mommy, not Vic. Not there, not there, not there, not there, not there, not there, not there. Send your back on it. here? Oh, yes. Waiting for you in the solarium, sir. If you're Professor Miller, that is. He's, he's all right? He's not hurt or...? I believe he's impatient to go home, sir, but uh, otherwise he seems quite well. It's a rem power. What is going on? Oh, I'm sure I cannot say, sir. Miss Radin's party seems rather rambunctious. Does it indeed? Take me to Bollinger. Right away, sir. Oh, I get up here. Ah, we can slow down a bit. Where are you going, Grant? 